battle against uh, terrorism involves all of us. Everybody in this country is a potential terrorist. <laughs> We don't even understand freedom anymore. We are a country that is headed towards socialism, totalitarianism, beyond your wildest imagination. I have to tell you, these FEMA camps, I'm tired of hearing. You know about them? Sure. I'm tired of hearing. I wanted to debunk them. Well, we've now for several days done research on them. I can't debunk them. I don't know anything about them. It is, it is our government. If you trust our government, it's fine. If you have any kind of fear that we might be headed towards a totalitarian state, look out, buckle up. There's something going on in our country that is, uh, ain't good. FEMA plastic coffins, detention centers, armored checkpoints, and armored military vehicles for civil purposes are well-documented facts. For the United States military claims stores of guillotines. The latest revelation of Obamacare sanctions death by guillotine. Code ICD-9E-978. Whoever Obama was only following... Obamacare is full of endless surprises. Yeah, you want to go Google Obamacare ICD-9. It's the code that, that confirms execution by beheading. Yeah, that's within Obamacare. That shouldn't come as any kind of a big surprise to anyone considering that uh, that's what they do in that part of the world. You know, they cut people's heads off and Obama is from that part of the world. And that's what he's got built into Obamacare. The guillotines show that Obamacare is not about American health care. It's about global health care. But it's not really health care. They've got to have some kind of a political structure so as to be able to kill anybody they want to in any nation on earth. They've got to get every person on the planet involved. And health care is the best idea that they came up with because everybody's going to need health care sooner or later. So the guillotines are in there. And we know that the guillotines is implemented by the World Health Organization, which is International uh, Office of the United Nations. So this proves doubly that Obamacare has nothing to do with about American health care, it has to do with about global health care. America better wake up if we're going to live in this country with any kind of freedom and liberty. It's hard to miss 60,000 pounds and 13 feet tall. The bulletproof armored vehicle is a hand-me-down from the military. It's part of a program where surplus military equipment is given to local law enforcement agencies. It's simply uh, a way to move our officers around in a protected environment. Holly Lezzo calls it unnecessary. Especially trained officers who, in addition to their regular assignments, respond immediately to the most dangerous crime scenes. But IMPD is no longer using a part-time SWAT team. Its team has become full-time. Now to the battle over your Second Amendment right, with one judge saying Americans have no right to carry a gun beyond the own, their own doorstep or their house. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And today, the president at a briefing with FEMA. As hurricane season begins, uh, we have to remember that responding to a hurricane is a team effort. That the shelters are overpacked because People are losing their jobs, they're going from their apartments to homes to the city shelters. The city's homeless problem, however, is worse now than ever, according to a new report, which says that nearly 115,000 people went homeless last year, including nearly 40,000 children. He was charged with violating Orlando's new city ordinance that bans feeding homeless people gathered in large groups. Like sleeping on a park bench, eating on sidewalks, or congregating in public spaces, all crimes. This would, in effect, criminalize homelessness. The regulations are so out of control that in cities all across the U.S., you now have to think twice before giving a hungry person anything to eat. City out there that has passed legislation that is criminalizing homelessness. City council members in Columbia, South Carolina, recently voted unanimously to give people on the streets the option to relocate or to get arrested. And they are actually arresting the homeless and shipping them to encampment centers. Shelter or prison for the homeless. Looking at their downtown business districts, want to bring in people, but at the same time, let's look at addressing the root cause of homelessness, not 
criminalizing, you know, the fact that someone, you know, just doesn't have a home because they may not have the job, they may not have the money. You know, a lot of other cities are looking at other ways to address homelessness, not, you know, arresting them, shipping them out to someplace in the middle of no place and putting them in a shelter that may or may not be homeless jail. So yeah, well, really well, very it's, interesting. It, it's not addressing the problem. You know, it's, it's just uh, that mentality of locking people up and throwing away the key and trying to just forget about it and not even have to acknowledge or visually see that this problem exists anymore, which, um, you know, I just think is a horrifying, horrifying event. Everything is set into place. They've begun throwing the poor, the homeless into the prison camps, the FEMA camps. Now they have left to do is take the guns. Arm black. I told you they were coming. Military helicopters conduct covert exercises over U.S. bank buildings. The entire city of Boston is in lockdown in the suburb of Watertown. Police with guns drawn are searching door to door. I mean, we had martial law up there. I mean, we had martial law up there. I mean, we had martial law up there. FBI and all these agents coming in, closing things down, going to people's houses. Those that didn't fit in in Hitler's Germany had reason to fear. The Nazis allowed no opposition. Their advantage lies in the speed of their strike. At night, they seem to appear from the darkness. Marines and sailors of the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit's Maritime Raid Force conduct a series of urban assaults as part of a realistic urban training exercise created by Special Operations Training Group. The exercise uses aggressors, improvised explosive devices, and high-value targets in a simulated community. and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison and after many days shall they be visited. The Department of Defense has just issued a, a new list of uh, extremists that should be watched. And on that, in fact, number one, hmm, past the Muslim Brotherhood and past Hamas, Hezbollah, Number one, evangelical Christians. We begin tonight with a newly leaked U.S. Army military police training manual for what they are calling civil disturbance operations. The Army manual outlines the plan to kill rioters and demonstrators in America. That's right, they have plans to confiscate our firearms and kill American citizens on U.S. soil this during a mass civil unrest, I guess, shooting innocent civilians, perhaps. Our own military being trained for armed conflict with U.S. citizens. They're being trained to confiscate our guns and preparations to process us into camps during civil unrest. It just dawned on me and hit me now completely, 100% sure that these Google barges are prisons concentration camps and it turns out to be a ship at sea and then it dawned on me that this is what these are just look at the aesthetic hush hush why look at the way it looks and then go look up other prison barges i'm gonna post a link and i urge you people to check it out i urge you to warn people around you these are prison barges these are prisons There's probably hundreds of these that are not seen yet. Anybody who doesn't get on the on on the ball and get rolling with the program is is going to get shipped out. Northrop Grumman's much feared spy copters. Lest we not forget that in the past two years, FEMA has ordered over 180,000 of these prisoner containment box cars. Brothers and sisters, and she got arrested outside and thrown in the car. Tyler went down the cop reading her right. 
We have this homeless girl that we were helping. A homeless got picked up in the street by the police. He was taken to the FEMA camp. Okay, and then there, while he was in there, they offered him and his friends the RFID, and his friends got it, but he refused to get it because somehow he knew it wasn't right. It wasn't right. Brothers and sisters, he refused the RFID, but they told him that if while he was sitting there in the chair, that they, 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 were, that they were telling him that if he get the RFID, he will have great benefit. He will be able to get full stamp, okay, and a, a money assistance from the government, okay. He will have great benefit, and he will, he didn't even have to wait online or anything. It will just go to his account because he has the RFID. It will be so easy for him, okay, to, to buy things and just get whatever he needs to get right away. In the in the in the government it will make it to him very easy. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. They call it a residential center, but it looks a hell of a lot more like a prison to me. Double fences, floodlights, barbed wire to keep people from getting out, and at the main entrance, railroad tracks, just like Nazi Germany. It's hundreds of thousands, plastic, coffin, so... Each one of those is a separate coffin stacked on top. There's probably, what, 20 to 25 per stack. And how many stacks? Literally hundreds of them. And you can fit four dead bodies per plastic coffin. It's basically a giant body bag. Tens of thousands of coffins. Officially, they're plastic grave liners. Seven feet long, three feet deep, with lids. The company that makes them says they're just being stored for people's pre-needs. Well, who in the hell has a pre-need for this many coffins? Unless they're planning a massacre. The bodies would pile up, the military would pile in, and the concentration camp gates would open. Co-sponsored says the use of the camps will be determined by the Secretary of Homeland Security. They're telling me there isn't one FEMA camp of these in the United States right now. There are not. Um, why is it in that bill? What is exactly in the bill? Well, it bill talks about to? building FEMA camps, doesn't it? In that particular bill that we're talking about? What's the bill number? Six FEMA camps to be built within the United States. How can a bill state that there'll be six FEMA camps built in the United States and then I'm being told there are none? I think those are our locations for if there's a disaster like in Katrina. I think that's what it is. It's not any kind of a concentration camp or anything to round up citizens. They can come and go as they please. Exactly. They won't be locked. No, no. They no. can go in and out because the place I saw in Texas is locked. You can't go in and out of it. Well, it's not, probably not being used either for a couple well, of years. we have films of children playing on the swings and the slides and stuff. And this one technically falls under Homeland Security. Well, I don't know. You know. I haven't been there, and I don't know who the children are, and the children are probably very happy. Where have we heard that before? They're probably children of the people that manage the place, I imagine. But they're not people that have been taken there, you know, by some green monsters and a machine. And I have fear of my government, not green monsters and machines from outer space. I have enough fear from here. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. It's no surprise that the United States incarcerates more people than any other country in the world. If you look at the newest statistics, I think some of the findings are pretty jarring. In fact, uh, we have 6.9 million people in the United States that are either in prison. 6.9 million people in the United States that are either in prison, on parole, or on probation. 
Let me give you the exact numbers. Uh, the number of people in prison or parole or on probation, that's 6.9 million Americans, exceeds the populations of the second and third largest cities, that's Los Angeles and Chicago combined, or the size of the next four, Houston, Philadelphia, Phoenix, and San Antonio put together. I'll be back. You will never see it coming. That I would bring about the biblical end of days. Intensify, it's expected to keep getting stronger. And because of that, the storm surge prediction is now up to 6 to 12 feet right near the path and just north of the path of the eye wall. Flash flood watches over inland areas, hurricane warnings in effect, Port Lavaca down to Corpus Christi and south of that. Here's the official forecast track from the National Hurricane Center making landfall early Saturday morning. Look at this, it's a category three storm. The first time we've had a category three landfall, if it happens, uh, since Wilma back in 2005, but then the problem after that is the system basically crawls to a stop and lingers over the same area for about three to four days or so. Now, in terms of how strong we think the hurricane is going to be, most of the computer models forecasting a category three storm, a couple forecasting a low end category four. That's a strong one. This is a look at the wind field with the system, and as it moves in, we're expecting wind gusts over 90 miles an hour, possibly over 100 miles an hour. That's late Friday night into Saturday morning along the coast of Texas. We shall propose further cooperative efforts between all the nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. We shall propose finally a global systems of communication satellites linking the whole world in telegraph and telephone and radio and television. The day need not be far away when such a system will televise the proceedings of this body to every corner of the world for the benefit of people. We're very concerned. We are working very hard. We have tremendous groups of talented people there. We've seen how the people of our country have reacted under this tremendous pressure and, and these horrible things that we call hurricanes. I thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. so proud to be here folks because i love activists if we're going to take this country back it's going to be activists that does it it's your it praise god thank you thank you so much nothing ever gets done until activists get involved and we're going to take this nation back doggone it we're going to take it back 
for God and the Constitution. But it's only through activism that we're going to do it. And you are the reason that I'm here today. Praise God. I'm just so pleased to serve with you at this time in our nation's history. God bless all of you out there. I appreciate you very much. I have our publication here, Aiden About Police Military Newsletter. And I want to share something with you here. I have a uh, good buddy at one time, J. Edgar Hoover, director of the FBI. He was not a homosexual like they say. That was a lie that they built up to discredit him. Here's what he said 40 years ago. He said, the individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous that he cannot believe it even exists. And that's the problem we have today. This conspiracy is so monstrous, so demonic, that we tell people about it and they say, you're crazy, this is America, it can't happen here. So J. Edgar Hoover said that, that it was the conspiracy so monstrous that people don't even believe it exists. And that's the problem we have today, folks, is doing that, convincing people that this conspiracy is real. I've had people calling me saying they go out to their mailbox and they find a little red dot or a little blue dot on their mailbox and they wonder what the little red dot and blue dot is. Well, it's marking your mailbox by the government so when foreign troops come in here on us after martial law, if you have a red dot on your mailbox, they take you out immediately and shoot you right in the head. But if you have a blue dot, they take you to the FEMA camps being built by Halliburton right now to house 50 million Americans. They're building enough concentration camps in America by Halliburton that Cheney's getting rich off of, Vice President Cheney's getting rich off of, to put those with the blue dot on your mailbox in those concentration camps. Now, if you go out and you find a pink dot on your mailbox, that means that they believe you'll be a good slave and you're going to go along with the program and serve our international antichrist masters. So watch for that dot. They haven't got up to our area yet because they're afraid we might catch them putting the dots on the mailbox and they wouldn't get back to their home at night, you know, if we catch them. But uh, it's time to prepare, folks. It's time to prepare. It's time to work, 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 work like we're going to win, which we are. But it's also time to prepare like you may lose temporarily. So I'm going to tell all of you, if you have not bought ammunition, if you have not bought guns, go get them now. Beginning today, more than a thousand American troops will descend across seven southwest states for a two-month military training exercise named Jade Helm 15. It's expected to be one of the largest military training exercises ever performed on domestic soil. But Jade Helm 15 is being met with suspicion by a lot of folks who live in the areas where it's supposed to happen because of this military handout. The map shows seven states involved and labels certain states like Texas, hostile territory. Uh, all the Army really says is uh, they are developing new warfare tactics uh, in a landscape that resembles the Middle East. And the legend, it states that red is a hostile area. Now, why is the federal government calling Utah and Texas hostile? And that there are kill plans in place for everyone who's leaning hostile. It involves a night jump by paratroopers onto a military base outside San Antonio where they are going to uh, link up with the special forces who have already infiltrated on the ground. And that is the classic example of what the military calls forcible entry. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. They're on Facebook and on Twitter. They're wondering, what's with the X marks that have been left on street curbs? Residents of at least two Northside neighborhoods report seeing more and more of these things. So we sent out our Jesse Degollado to check it out. If X marks the spot, then why here? 
Why are there small red X's scattered here and there along curbs and sidewalks? Even X's that were apparently cut into fresh cement, then colored blue. Our intelligence unit is looking into it. Uh, our North Property Crimes unit is looking into it. And we also have our patrol officers in the area are well aware of the situation. So are they a way of alerting burglars? Who's home and who's not? It doesn't appear that there's anything sinister going on. Still, police aren't ruling anything out. Maybe they're marking for underground utilities. That is one of the uh, prevailing theories that we're looking into that it could be. Yet SAWS, CPS Energy, Public Works and Solid Waste Management tell us they don't use markings like this. You know, I never noticed that up until now. Olivia Guzman, who has a red X in front of her house, agrees given where her utilities are located. No, they're over here. That's the phone um, at and right there. Then why are they here? I would like to know why somebody will mark the front of my house. Now, SAPD tells me that this is not against the law, but it is trying to confirm whether a company was going to was going door to door and then left these X's in front of houses that perhaps weren't interested in what they were trying to sell. Now, they also will be looking into whether the red X's and the blue X's are somehow connected. It's because some of these people, there will be this is a new normal. They're never going to go back home. So they want to help them as much so that they're never just walking out of here and feeling like they're going back onto the street. They work with them throughout the process here to help them adjust to this new world order that they are they're going to be living in after this. To help them adjust to this new world order that they are they're going to be living in after this. To help them adjust to this new world order that they are they're going to be living in after this. Oh, and I imagine there's so many questions, so much concern, and all of those people, I love, it was almost like on cue, when you're talking about the, the army of volunteers, a flock of nuns walked right behind you. I mean, it could not... All of this as well, what can you tell us? Let me introduce you to Danielle here. Danielle, you just arrived. Share with us how you were rescued. Some guys had uh, called our phone and asked us where we were because we was waiting for the police for like 36 hours and they never came. And we was waiting at the home. We did the white flags and everything and nobody came. But then somebody had called the phone after we decided to leave the house and we had walked to the gas station with the kids. And then they had called and came and picked us up. But we had been there like five days with, with no food and no lights and nobody came. Like nobody came. No, you're with your children. We've heard of stories of, of mothers trying to save their children from the rushing waters. Can you ex tell us how we that was? Through four feet of water to go get them food on the first day. Yeah, that's a lot of shit. But y'all sitting here, y'all trying to interview people during their worst times. Like, that's not the smartest thing to do. Like, Sorry. people are really breaking down and y'all sitting here with cameras and microphones trying to ask us what the fuck is wrong with us. So I'm so and sorry, you really man. trying to understand it with the microphone still in my face sorry. with me shivering cold with my kids wet and you still putting the microphone sorry, in man. my face sorry uh, Rosa Flores uh, it sounds like you've got a very upset family there uh, we're going to take a break uh, from that uh, and we'll get back to you later on uh, Rosa Flores in Houston Forest thank you uh, Let's go. Shit. Hey, listen, you can fuck the hand up, kill what we do nothing. You fuck the hand up.
Who did that? You know, she did that. Mm. Now to a controversial bill resurfacing in Congress. The FEMA camp bill allows the government to run at least six military installations when a national emergency is declared. These emergency centers would be run by FEMA under the command of the Secretary of Homeland Security. And a few years ago, a similar bill was presented in Congress, but it didn't go anywhere over concerns that the broad language can lead to sweeping unchecked government power. Now, another version is back up for debate, and Bob English, a civil liberties activist and blogger, joins us now for more. Welcome there, Mr. English. Hello. So, uh, it didn't pass the first time around. Why was there resistance to it? Well, a fellow by the name of Lee Rogers began writing about it and raising some alarms, concern over the, the broad sweeping powers it would give the uh, Dep Department of Homeland Security. And uh, it kind of caught fire and uh, just died. It just died because people were afraid of what this could lead to. Exactly. There were concerns that there were parallels to the Japanese internment facilities in World War II that we saw. And uh, for practical purposes, the financial mess was going on and there were other things to be dealt with at the time. Okay. So there were concerns over the, the vague language. It didn't pass. Now there's this new version of the bill. What's changed? Well, they took out the vague language so that the centers are specifically set up to uh, house, shelter, even educate people for extended periods of time, um, but they are limited to that specific purpose. Okay, so of course this whole, the, this legislation is meant to be enacted in the event of an emergency, but what exactly does that mean? What is the definition of emergency, especially when it comes to this legislation, when would it be enacted? Sure, we have to go back to 1988 to the Stafford Act bill to actually get the definition of emergency. And this covers things like tornadoes, floods, hurricanes, natural disasters. But it also gives the president to declare an emergency to avert a catastrophe, which raises the issue of pre um, preemptiveness. Okay, but this also, uh, this, this is, the goal here is to mobilize resources to have this plan in the to, to prevent a tragedy from happening but also a reaction to it right yes a reaction and that's where some of the concerns for uh, civil liberties activists comes in because it's a slippery slope once the government has this power and all these centers are set up and it's at least six maybe more probably more um, there is a real potential for the abuse of power here okay interesting you know we have we have this map that shows how the U.S. would be divided in the event of an emergency, if we can pull that up there. There it is. So this is how the U.S. will be divided into districts. You see 10 of them there. Uh, this is according to the National uh, Emergency Center establishment. Can you, um, can you describe what this map is? What exactly does that mean? I mean, it doesn't really make sense in terms of states as we know them. What is this classification system? Sure. What are the purposes? It doesn't look like the map that you and I saw in elementary school. Not um, at all. Effect effectively, the U.S. has been cordoned off into these different districts. And so these new uh, emergency centers will be spread out throughout the United States um, in, in most of these eventually. And it gives uh, FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security uh, jurisdiction over what goes on in these, uh, in these places during a time of emergency. Okay, I want to go into what, because this act does make some, some specific examples, some exclusions, uh, set some limitations, I should say. So the National Emergency Center Establishment Act, what it does not do, it does not authorize any federal officer or employee to force an individual to enter a national emergency center or prevent an individual from leaving a national emergency center. So, Bob, it looks to me like there are some safeguards there. If you don't like it, you can leave. <laughs> well, I'd like to think so. Well, I'd like to think so. And this was actually one of the other things that was changed in this new version of the bill. They added this. Um, but if you read what they're saying, you know, federal officer, federal employee, that doesn't cover members of the military. And since these are going to be installed in decommissioned and existing military bases, you're going to have people from the military there. So that doesn't cover members of the military. And since these are going to be installed in decommissioned and existing military bases, you're going to have people from the military there. So 
well. I would think they will have people, namely the military, who would be able to force people to stay there or prevent them from leaving. Now, for civil liberty advocates like yourself and, and others like you that are worried that this could be a precursor to government overreach, um, what would satisfy your, what, what would make you more comfortable with this piece of legislation, I guess? Do you think that the language in it should be clarified, that there's, that it's not so vague so that it could be interpreted and abused? Ideally, it would be withdrawn, but if I were to, if I were forced to live with it, I would want the restrictions on uh, keep, keeping people in there to extend to the military and, in fact, to anybody, um, not let the states or even local governments have that um, ability. Okay, Bob, so we're talking about emergencies, we're talking about disasters, we're talking about chaotic situations where some order hopefully will well the goal there is to be established and you know some are going to say desperate times call for desperate measures so doesn't that ring true for natural disasters and cases like that what, what do desperate people in the government do in those situations um like i said i think it's a slippery slope and we don't really need people in power with these vast sweeping powers to begin with in fact, underneath the bridge, and they were loading up with as many people. It's got to be dozens of people mm. in the back oh of that thing. Gosh. They take them to a nearby Walmart, mm. uh, and then the Walmart. They take them to a nearby Walmart, mm. uh, and then the Walmart is where uh, I guess metro buses or school buses will take them to the shelter. The question is, what shelter are they taking them to? The question is, what shelter are they taking them to? Because I heard Tom say, GRB is overcrowded and and uh, or not overcrowded, but at the capacity they had planned for. So right. I think they're. Gosh, if, I, I certainly have that question. I don't know if we've answered it. But that's what you mean when you say disorganized organization, because there is at least some kind of system. I mean, earlier, we've seen reporters have situations where people come out of water like this, and it's late at night, and they're wet and with their children and their pets, and uh, they really have nowhere to go. At least they have a system where they're taking them to a Walmart where they can be inside and, and wait and figure out what comes next. Absolutely. I, I think the people I talked to, uh, all, with the exception of one, uh, they all were eager to go wherever the truck would take them. Uh, interestingly enough, hours ago, as dusk set in, the Coast Guard helicopters and the National Guard helicopters were, uh, had, had pulled away. I hear one. There's no way we can see it. It's too far off. But I heard it pass over a military helicopter. I had talked to a sheriff's deputy earlier. They said they had uh, a quadriplegic who was uh, stuck in his home uh, and Obviously, you need immediate rescue, but uh, and they were going to try and do that one with a chopper. I don't know if that's what we're hearing, but I know that was something that they were discussing. Well, in, Ted, in the meantime, as we, it just continues to yeah. be this, these groups of people walking. Oh, as we watch these pictures, it's just, uh, you, you know, what this has turned into is a humanitarian crisis here. Because clearly, when you have a city that's paralyzed, and then you have tens and thousands of people needing to be rescued, and so many more at the shelters, and we're looking at pictures like this even on the third day nearly approaching our fourth day we are dealing with the humanitarian crisis it's it's only going to get worse because where do all these people go are there enough shelters what about food what about clothing what about hopefully they'll open up more churches right that's that's certainly a big resource we have in this community a lot yeah. of churches that yeah. hopefully will step up any thoughts on that uh, ted well i think we'll get to the point well i think i think our argentina will get to the point where i think we'll realize that we cannot shelter this many people in a city even the size of Houston because of the crisis that we are dealing with. Yeah. That our resources will be so strapped that we will likely have to uh, accept other people's offer to shelter some of the, the our neediest. Harvey's aftermath as they try to go back to normal. We take a closer look at some of the complications people are facing and how you can get assistance. Good evening to all of you. Welcome to 12 News Tonight. I'm Vanessa Holmes. And I'm Dejani Garrison. Thanks so much for joining us. In Jefferson County, temporary housing is on the way for residents displaced from their homes. FEMA will be providing disaster assistance starting tomorrow. Our Jackie Massey is live at the Red Cross Center at Thomas Jefferson Middle School in Port Arthur with more. Jackie. Vanessa and Dejanique, there's about 200 people inside this Red Cross shelter behind me at the Thomas Jefferson Middle School, but many of them may be moving soon because FEMA will be providing temporary housing for them. And many inside that I spoke to say this is a good thing. 
Many residents are displaced from their homes like Terry Patio. She had several inches of water in her home in Port Arthur off 17th Street. She was rescued and now she's staying at Thomas Jefferson Middle School at the Red Cross shelter. Uh, uh, water was like, coming in and they had to get a boat and boat us out of there. About 15,000 homes out of 81,000 in Jefferson County received major damage from Harvey, according to County Judge Jeff Brannick. In the county, only 18,000 homes have flood insurance. Port Arthur Mayor Derek Freeman took to social media, announcing on Facebook that FEMA will be making disaster assistance available tomorrow. Yeah, that would be ideal. Yes, that'd be wonderful. I know a lot of people would really love that. I know I love it. I'm ready for that. According to Judge Brannick, two barges with apartments, which can hold about 300 people each, will be transported to Jefferson County for people who are living in shelters or who are evicted from their apartments. For people who are living in shelters or who are evicted from their apartments. For people who are living in shelters or who are evicted from their apartments. This is a picture of what the barges could look like, and Brannick says they could be located near the port of Port Arthur. I got displaced too, yes me. I got displaced too because of the flood and because I have my dog and a whole lot of other stuff. And I'm here with this nice gentleman and there's some other people. It was a whole lot of people here, probably about two, three hundred people. And there's like a long line of people over there just now getting here. And there are thousands of people in here, but I can't go and show you for public, like privacy reasons. But I can't go and show you for public, like privacy reasons. But I can't go and show you for public, like privacy reasons. And Sergeant Sanchez of HPD just got through threatening to arrest people if they wanted something to eat. Now, members of the Red Cross are supposedly trying to find food because they can't find it. However, members of certain police departments are getting steaks and hamburgers and fresh food. While well, mind you, this is actually food from yesterday. So, and they have like tubs and tubs and tubs of the food, but they won't feed the people. Like. Like this shit is real. Well, you gotta be kidding me. You guys are gonna, you guys are gonna just look at this one. We got FEMA barges, ladies and gentlemen, coming to Houston. This moron, uh, somebody, I think it was like a mayor or something, said they're like river boats. They're like river boats. Uh, they're like floating prisons. You moron, mayor. Look at this, you guys. We got FEMA barges. And by the way, I heard they didn't even pass inspection. These things look like a jail inside. Port Arthur Mayor clarified temporary housing situation for city. This guy right here, Derek Freeman, the mayor, posted a clarification to the temporary housing situation regarding the FEMA barges coming to Port Arthur. Mayor Derek Freeman posted a clarification to the temporary housing situation regarding the FEMA barges coming to Port Arthur. There will be two FEMA barges which will hold 300 per Arthur. On his Facebook clarifying about the barges that will be used to house displaced residents. I am... I'm... Uh... Looks like a jail. That looks like jail. Take a look at that. It looks like jail. And their feet they're 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 floating on water? FEMA barges? You gotta be kidding me. Port Arthur, please allow me to clarify our housing situation as of right now. We have 270 citizens in shelter. We have citizens in added to that, we have 200 50 plus citizens being displaced by flooding on their first floor apartments. Then we currently have some 4,000 plus citizens sheltering in their homes. P-A-I-S-D, whatever the hell that is, first thought they would be out four to five weeks. But after assessing the damage on all the campuses, they were able to get our kids back? They were able to get our kids back. Gwendolyn Donahue, displaced resident who is currently staying at the Red Cross shelter at Thomas Jefferson Middle School, is not happy with this type of temporary housing. To live from shelter to shelter is hard enough, 
But at this moment, now you're talking about putting me on a barge? Putting me on a barge, a ship? What you put out a cargo of food to ship around and now you're talking about this is how I have to live? She was rescued from her home during her uh, home during Hurricane Harvey and transported from shelter to shelter. She said last thing she wants to do is live on a barge on the water. I will say again, I'm not a fish. I'm not a crab. I'm not a shrimp because I don't know nothing about being on a boat. I don't know nothing about being on a boat. County Judge Jeff Branwick said FEMA and the Texas Division of Emergency Management are looking at other options for temporary housing, such as mobile homes, trailers, and shelters. No, they want to get you on those FEMA prison uh, barges, take you out to sea, and kill you. Oh, man. Officials are also looking into contract, because you know what? Then all of a sudden, another storm comes, and oh, the barge went down with the ship. You know, dude, we got a bunch of deaths. Oh, man, I would never, I wouldn't step foot on these barges. Officials are also looking into contractors with the sheltering and temporary essential power program who will make repairs to damaged homes and could allow people to move back. Patricia Mooney, another evacuated resident, said she would not mind living on a barge. It's a nice place to regroup. Get yourself together, you know. Uh, give it a try. You don't know until you try, said Mooney. Mayor Freeman said three meals a day will be offered at the barges along with laundry and satellite TV. And when another hurricane comes and basically uh, flips over the barge, you'll be dead. But until then, you'll have satellite TV. You never know until you try it. Get on the barge. Officials are looking at different security options and are discussing the possibility of separating men and women on the barges. Judge Brannick said he believes a screening process will be in place to prevent sex offenders and criminals from staying on the barge. Oh, this gets just better and better. This just gets better and better. This gets better and better. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to hell. Yeah, your, your uh, new house is here. It's called the FEMA barge. It's called the FEMA barge. And it's hell on earth. So let's pack you all in there, and then when the next storm comes, we're going to just basically have it sink to the bottom of the sea. Good riddance. But you'll get your satellite television and three square meals a day. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years.